Welcome to our annual Freedom to Marry press conference. Uh, we were here a year ago, uh, after, shortly after I introduced my marriage equality bill, uh, to talk about this issue. And we're here again, and we're going to be here every year until we have marriage equality in Pennsylvania, which I believe, as I will discuss shortly, to be inevitable. What's happened in the past year? Well, we've seen more progress being made in other states and other countries around the world. We just saw, uh, we've seen marriage equality being considered in Maryland and Delaware. Governor Cuomo has indicated he's going to make a new push for it in New York. You know, I debated uh, Maggie Gallagher, one of the leading spokespeople against marriage equality, about eight or nine months ago. And a funny thing happened, they were having a hearing in the Senate in Maryland. And there was a state senator who was opposed to marriage equality. And then Maggie Gallagher testified, and then suddenly he switched his vote. Some of you may have read about this. Because he said, now that I understand what is behind opposition to marriage equality is often just bigotry. And I heard the worst sort of bigotry in this testimony. I am switching my vote, which brings us one vote closer to marriage equality in Maryland. Another thing that's happened in the past year is we've seen a lot of our uh, friends on the other side of the aisle, um, their children have been coming out for marriage equality. We saw both Bush girl, uh, the Bush children, former President Bush, and uh, former presidential candidate John McCain's children come out and appear in commercials supporting marriage equality. We know Dick Cheney's children have been active in supporting marriage equality. And that's a good thing, because we see this as more and more a bipartisan human rights issue, and not a partisan issue, and not an, uh, an issue that's relegated to one ideology or another. But you know what the most important thing to me that's happened in the past year? Nothing. What do I mean by that? Well, marriage equality is already the law in five states in the District of Columbia. In Massachusetts, people have been able to get married, gay and lesbian couples have been able to get married for almost eight years. So we've had another year of experience at what happens when you allow people to get married. What has happened in Massachusetts and Vermont and the other states? Nothing in terms of adverse impact to heterosexual couples, adverse impact to children, adverse impact to society. What we see is exactly everyone, once people can get married, everyone else goes on living their lives the way they did before. Which is why the longer that this goes on, the less controversial it will become to the point where a few years from now, we're going to wonder what all the fuss ever was. Just like we do with allowing people of all races to ride the bus, people of all races to drink out of the water fountain, and allowing women to vote, and allowing people of all races to vote. Now we would never consider not doing any of those things. And in 20 years, we're going to wonder why gay people were ever denied the right to live their lives as they choose. The one good thing, we, the one thing we know, the one consequence we know for sure in terms of same-sex marriage is it's really good for the same-sex couples who get married. They get access to over a thousand state and federal benefits that we as a society have enacted in order to encourage people to get married because we know it's good for them and we know it's good for society. We know it's good for the children of these couples who are no longer forced to raise their children out of wedlock, which all of the studies show is the most dangerous circumstance to raise a child. All of it is good, and there is no bad thing. I continue, when I, when I, when I debate these issues, when I talk about these issues, I ask people, what bad thing will happen if we allow same-sex couples to marry? And where is the evidence that that has happened? And I have never received any answer, because this is not based on rational argument. This is based on emotion, this is based on subjective religious belief, the opposition, and we are here as a legislature to make the law that protects everybody based on rational arguments. I may talk a little bit later in the program about some of those arguments, but in the meantime, I have some people that I would like to introduce to say a few words. I'm very proud that they're here today. Uh, the first one is uh, someone who's leading the charge for marriage equality in the House of Representatives, Representative Mark Cohen.